getting a little more smarter and a little more organized as we uh, put this quilt together. This is the first one that I've pre-quilted. So, you know, I'm thinking a little bit more about um, how we could do this and how we can do it smart. So if you look at this section, so what we're gonna do this week is we're doing section five and six. That's gonna be this whole side right over here. Number 29 and 30, they have split that into two different quilting designs. And to be honest with you, I just feel like it just takes more time. Um, and I want to go ahead and I am going to piece 29 and 30 together. And then I'm going to quilt them. So that's these two pinwheels. So I have those here. These are going to be my two pinwheels and for the record, um, I don't know why when I when I cut these down, I cut them to three inches by three inches instead of two and a half by two and a half. So I did have to cut these down a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and piece these two together. These are gonna be number 29 and 30, and then I'm going to quilt these all at once. Then you have right here piece 31 and 33, those two. I'm not gonna quilt those separately. I'm gonna go ahead and piece those together. That is going to be these two pieces right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew those together and then I'm gonna quilt them. So we're gonna do these two together and these two together. You don't have to do those together. You can go ahead and do those separately if you want. They have recommended quilting designs for each one of those separately. Um, these two, I'm gonna go ahead and piece these two together as well. So the pinwheel and the, um, the pennants. So that's gonna be this one right here, which I actually did already quilt. So I pulled out the stitching so I could quilt them together so you could see it. Um, it wasn't that much stitching. So I'm gonna go ahead and piece these two together. That's gonna make this four and a half by six and a half, which means um, we're gonna do the four by six design for this one. So, and then finally, I have these two that are gonna get connected onto the flying geese block. And you can see they already had planned on you piecing those two together. They counted it as 39 for both of those. So that's gonna be these two right here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together. Um, sew these together, sew this together, this and this, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to piece them all. So for this, you're gonna have to cut, and I was just cutting my um, scraps of batting. This is gonna be, um, this is gonna be two by four. So these are three by five, three by five and three by five. That's the batting size for all of these. And then for this one, and I'll put this in your, uh, your supply list. This one, you need your batting piece to be five by seven because this is four by six, the end. So five by seven for that. So we're gonna go ahead, piece, 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 piece. And then I'm gonna go ahead and quilt all of these. And I wonder if I can fit it all in a nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. Wouldn't that be great? We'll go, we'll go ahead and give it a try. I'll load it up in the machine and see if it'll fit, but I'm gonna just start off by piecing these. So I have a Filtech pre-wound bobbin in. I'm gonna go ahead and piece with my deco bob in this light gray. I am set up for a center, uh, a straight center stitch. I'm using my dual feed foot with my quarter inch sole on it. And I'm going to set my stitch up to a 2.0. And let's go ahead. Um, the other thing I like to do is I like to set my machine up for auto lift. And a lot of times I will start with my needle down so I have something to butt my needle up against. But first I need to thread it. So let me go ahead and hit my thread button. And um, it's up to you if you wanna use pins. I couldn't find these. I was like so distressed because I couldn't find my little magnetic pin cushion. This is my favorite. This is made by Clover. I love it because it has a lid and I love it because it has this little area here that you can get your finger into. These are magic pins. I love these too and I love these because these are ultra thin. So when you push it to the fabric, it's not such a struggle. So for pinwheels where you really want it to line up, these might be a good idea. And when you go to push your pins in, it doesn't move your fabric as much. There's not as much push and pull. 
and they just push right into the fabric. The other thing that's really nice about them is um, since they're so thin, you can also uh, sew right over them. I mean, every once in a while you might hit one, but not like you would on something like a flower head pin because look at the difference between these two. Can you see how much thinner the one on the right is? So that's why I love these magic pins and I like that they're short too. Um, and this, that's their, uh, these are their patchwork pins. I love them. Okay, let's go ahead and sew these together. These aren't gonna matter as much because you're not lining stuff up, but if you're lining stuff up like this, it's best to pin them. Let me see. So I'm gonna start with my foot up, my needle down, and I'm just gonna put this up here. And let's go ahead. Why isn't he? Sometimes it does take a little bit just to engage that roller on here and he just wasn't progressing. So I'm gonna just start a little bit further. Um, I'm just gonna go here and then I will backspace over it. Or not backspace, backspace. That's funny, huh? Like I'm on a computer or something. I'm gonna pull this because there is a little push with the fabric. And so right off, and I'm gonna get my next two. It's kind of like having a leader. I'm going to sew right off again, just so I can cut my threads in between. You don't want to sew long distance without fabric in between uh, the foot and um, between the foot and the feed dogs, because that can ruin the bottom of your feet. And let's do these two. Again, make sure that you're piecing these two correctly. So let me look at that picture one more time to make sure. I think it's the pinwheel on top and then the pendants. Let me just check. And it is. You don't want to turn these this way. That's the wrong direction. We'd be defying gravity. Okay, here we go. Okay, go ahead and turn your iron on too because we're going to give these a little press. And then we will go ahead. Sorry about that. We'll give them a little press and then we're going to quilt them. Okay. So I have my three pieces of batting. These are my three by five inch and then my five by seven. So that's what we're going to use for the quilting. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these apart and then we're gonna press them and I am gonna convert my machine over to embroidery. So let's go ahead and press. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these. And let's press them. Go ahead and press this one just like that. I'm gonna give it a little shot of best press. And we can set the seam first light to the dark. Perfect.
Look how perfectly my little pennant, little triangle one is just like right under there. Like I planned it or something. And then we'll do this one too. I'm going to press it this way because it's less bulky. And then we are gonna go ahead and quilt. So convert your machine, if you're using a combo machine, um, convert it over uh, to embroidery. So I loaded the design files and I can fit all four of these in a nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. If you don't have one of those, you could do nine and a half by 14, um, or you can just break them up and do them in smaller hoops. You could do uh, this one in the five by seven, and then I think, you could, you might be able to fit, and then the other three in a six by 10, but I'm doing all of them in my nine and a half by 14 inch hoop. So I'm gonna go ahead and hoop up my fabric. And none of these have, um, none of these have the, the background fabric that you're gonna trim down. They're already the size they're gonna be. Does that make sense? So you're going to do that placement stitch for your fabric and put it down and then you're going to skip the tack down and then you're going to go straight to the quilting on all of these. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and hand tighten this a little bit. Remember, you don't want to pull so hard that you're stretching your fabric. You just want it to lay nice and flat. And I'm just gonna put it in like that. That should be good. Let's go to the machine and let's load up our designs. I'm gonna grab my handy dandy little sheet. And this too, because for instance, we're gonna have two different designs for this and this, and a different design for this, and a different design for this. So you're gonna kinda of have to choose which one, because like I said, I'm quilting them together. If you want, you can choose, you can quilt all of those separately and follow the exact instructions. So my hoop is on. Let's go ahead and put in the designs. And um, I was just kind of playing around with it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do quilting, quilting. And I'm gonna lay this one down like this. And I'm gonna lay this one down like this. Or it could be the other way around, but that's how I'm gonna fit it into this hoop. I'm gonna grab my handy dandy little sheet. I'm gonna grab both of them and let's select our designs. So I'm gonna go embroidery, pocket, and let's get to our quilting designs. The first one I'm gonna load in here is gonna be the one for the two pinwheels. So either design 29 or 30. Let's see what my choices are. For 29 and 30, I could either do the small pinwheels, oh, I'm sorry, Halloween four or Chevron one. You know, I haven't done much Halloween four, I kind of just like it simple. Like I really do like that chevron. I'm gonna just do the chevron, chevron one for those two. So I'm gonna go chevron one, PES. My finish size is gonna be two by four. These are gonna be vertical. So I'm gonna do this one right here and I'm gonna go ahead and set it. And let's bring that up. To, I'm actually, I'm hooped all the way over here. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the right. Now let's go ahead and add. The next one is going to be this one right here and 31 and 33. So let's go ahead and take a peek. Um, 31 and 33. So we could do either 31 Halloween four or 33 Halloween one. So either the spider webs or the candy corn. I'm gonna go candy corn. So I'm gonna do Halloween four. So let's go in here. Um, I'm gonna go quilting, Halloween four, block by block. And the two by four design right here. And direction doesn't matter on that one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit set. And we'll go and drag that right down. My fabric's not gonna be overlapping because remember, 
it is going to fit right inside. Like what you see is what you're going to get. Their fabric isn't going to be hanging over. So I'm going to go ahead and add. Next thing I'm going to do is I want the quilting for the pinwheel and the pennants. I'm doing all of that together. Either design 34 or 36. 34 or 36. So Halloween 3, which is the witches. So either Halloween 3, 36 or 34, or wavy 2. Um, I haven't done wavy 2, I don't think. So I'm going to go ahead and do wavy 2. Or, you know, these are the... I'm trying to think. These are stitches that, I mean, there's nothing else going on. So you know what? Why don't we do the witches? We'll do Halloween 3. Remember, this is a vertical block, so you want your witches to be flying um, horizontally. So I'm going to go in here, Halloween 3, block by block, and we want the 4 by 6 design. And we want our witch to be flying this way. So I'm going to go ahead and load that, set. I'm not going to move it all the way to the left because I can use that to re-hoop over here. And then the last design is going to be right here, 39. And for 39, they want you to do Halloween 1 spider webs. And it's going to be the 2 by 4 So Halloween 1. And we want 2 by 4 we're going to set that embroidery. Whoops. Return cuz I didn't move my design yet. Let's go edit. Rotate. I think I think my spider's upside down. I'm going to rotate the other way. There we go. And I think that looks pretty good. Let me go ahead. I'm going to move these right to the edge. That looks perfect. I'm going to say OK. My hoop is already on, and so everything fits. I'm just going to go, um, if we want, we could color group too. So it's going to lay down all the batting first. And then we can do, you know what, I'm going to do them individually. If you did want a color group, see right here how it has a placement stitch, tack down, placement stitch, tack down. You could go layout, and you could hit two to one. And now, see, it has all the placements, all the tack downs. I'm going to not do that because um, I might do different color threads. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to uncolor group it. And so now we're broken back up into those little segments. So we'll do one at a time. And that way, I, I won't get as confused. So I'm going to take these off of my fabric. I have that gray in there right now. And let's go ahead and do the first one, which is going to be the chevron. I'm going to grab my piece of three by five. And let's give it a little shot of spray to the back. I got to be careful laying these down because um, some of them are a little shy of that three by five. I'm going to get my applique scissors so I can trim that. And the first fabric we're going to lay down, they're the two pinwheels that were sewn together. After I finish this today and we're all set and ready for our next session, then I'm going to be doing the home 
is where the haunt is pillow. And I hope to have that done so I can um, show it to you tomorrow. I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray to the back. I'm gonna do it. I have a little spray box here. So I just put it in there. I, it used to be such a beautiful spray box, but Momo has um, Momo has stepped on it and laid on it. It lasted for years, and it barely lasted a couple of months with Momo. Oh, okay, before I do that, I need the placement line for my fabric. So don't put it down yet. You need your placement line, and you're going to put your fabric right so it fits snugly in that placement line. We are going to trim it down, so don't worry if it doesn't quite reach your muslin is going to, um, you're going to trim it down with your muslin. And we'll, we'll be pressing everything and I'm going to lay that down right here. That looks great. And I sprayed really well, so I want it to stay down in all areas. You can also tape if you want. And um, for this, I think I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put white in. I could do orange, I haven't done any orange. Whoop, skip this step. That step is going to be the tack down, but there's no ex excess fabric hanging over. So we're gonna go right over here. Let me go back to layout. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna skip this step forward. Now it's gonna be doing the quilting and that's what I want. good. Don't you love that? Okay, I'm just going to leave my white thread in and I am going to do the next one. So first thing is placement stitch. And this one we're doing the candy corn. And this one is the pinwheel with the mustard colored fabric. So grab your batting. You want another piece of three by five. Spray the wrong side. Lay this down. Do your tack down. And then we're gonna trim. Okay, placement line for the fabric. So give your fabric a little shot of spray. I like to spray these edge to edge.
And uh, the design's really not directional, so you're not going to really have to pay too much attention about how you lay this down. It's not like the witches where there's a top and a bottom. This is just candy corn. Okay. There we go. Whoops. Remember, we're going to skip this step. This is the fabric tack down. I'm going to go to the next step, which is just the quilting. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Looks so good. All right, I'm just gonna leave my white in and do my placement stitch for my batting. This is gonna be your biggest piece of pat batting, the five by seven. Go ahead and give it a little spray. This is directional, so it matters how we lay our fabric down. Not our batting. Okay, tack it down. And let's go ahead and trim it. Okay, do your attack, your placement line for your fabric. And I'm going to give this a little shot of spray. Remember, when we lay it down, we lay it down like this, not like that.
and I want to get it right in that placement line. Am I high enough? I think I am. There we go. I think that is good. Move it over here. Push it down on those corners and the edges. You're gonna skip the next step, which is the tack down. So I'm gonna go here. Next step, there's my quilting. That looks good. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start. And then we have one last piece and you're done quilting all your border pieces for five and six. time for the last one gonna leave that white thread in just do my placement stitch for my batting give your batting a little shot of spray and again I use Ganold KK 100 we carry it in the store it is my favorite spray adhesive
And then we'll do our tack down. This is the piece that we're putting on and it does have, well, this is the top. So this is what you want on top. So I want you to look at your spider design and mine has the corner cobweb in the top right. So I'm gonna swing mine around. So this will be my, and, but you, if you want it the other way, you can do it the other way, whatever looks good to your eye. Um, but I think that corner cobweb, but when I'm talking about the corner cobweb, I'm talking about that one right there. I think I'm gonna lay my fabric down like this on top of it. Let's go ahead and trim that. Patrick was saying goodbye, so I had to pause it. Okay. And uh, go ahead and do the placement line for the fabric and give your fabric a little shot of spray. Part of me thinks I should just do my stitching in black. Um, but I've done it all in white, have done a little bit of gray and a little bit of green. So black is so bold, isn't it? Ladies, I'm such a big chicken. Sometimes I just like it to just, just disappear into the background. Um, do you think that's going to look bad if I do black there? Um, I think it'll probably look pretty good. Let's go ahead and do it. I am gonna change my bobbin thread out too. Hopefully it looks amazing. If it doesn't, well, nobody's gonna say anything. They're not gonna go, I really love your quilt, except for that block with the black quilting that looks really bad. Can you imagine that? Somebody said that? They might think it. Let's just go for it, ladies. I think the black's going to look so good over here, too. All right. I'm going to thread up. I just feel like sometimes if I don't change that bobbin thread out, I get a little bit of pinwheeling where you just, the needle goes through and you can see that white in the background. And uh, we're skipping the next step. Look at your screen. It's the tack down for the fabric. We don't need that. There's our quilting. Let's go ahead and start it. And then why don't you go ahead and um, this is two minutes of quilting. Heat up your iron because we're gonna press and then we're gonna trim them down. You can have your four and a half by six and a half pop ruler to trim the big top one, and the other ones I would just use a small ruler. I think that was the way to go.
it looks so good. All right, let's go ahead and cut them all apart. I'm gonna slide off this hoop. Let's bring it over here. We're gonna cut them apart and press them. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop them out of the hoop. We'll go ahead and just iron them all together. I'm gonna use a little best press from the back. I mean, if you want, you could cut them apart and then kind of trim them down. That way, let's do that. Sometimes, ladies, we're just doing, I'm just doing this on the fly. Get this out of the way. These are pretty much going to get cut down to the exact size. Ta-da! Doesn't that look amazing? Oh my goodness, it is pretty cute. So if you get puckering, don't worry about it. When you go and press it, it's going to look amazing. I had some puckering on my muslin, and I mean, there's rarely a pucker that I can't get out. Um... I don't know if I've ever had a piece recently that hasn't been just fantastic once it's pressed and squared up. And if your piece didn't fit in there perfectly, you get a second chance because you're going to cut to the muslin. That looks great. I'd love it if Kimberbell did a big quilt. They haven't done a big one in a while. They've kind of been sticking to this 40 inch by 40 inch size. The thing I love about that is I love that it's easy to get done, but a larger quilt might be fun. Okay, this I'm just gonna cut down to four and a half by six and a half. I'm just gonna use my pop ruler to do that. And the edges are pretty close, but it is a little short on the top and the bottom. Don't worry about that because you're going to cut to the muslin and uh, everything's going to get sewn in. So here we go. Looks great. And see how it wasn't quite all the way there, but that's okay because you have your backing fabric that you're that were measured to perfectly. So I'm going to put that one to the side. These are all going to be um, two and a half by four and a half. So I have a two and a half by four and a half inch square ruler. I'm just going to use this one. And these are pretty even. These look pretty good. Oh, and be careful because on these pinwheels, remember you have like where it's thick on um, the centers and it kind of pushes your fabric a little bit. I'm going to see if I can do this in two cuts. One straight up for me and then one straight up and then the one at the top. 
and push it down on that side, straight up, on the side. And there we go. That one is done. Beautiful. You know what I like about this Martelli rotating mat? The other thing I really like about it, number one, it just turns so well. Um, but I love that, you know, if this top gets beat up, you can just replace the top. You keep the bottom part. And I also have the ironing part. See how this just lifts right off? Ta-da! And then you put it, it's kind of like a turntable. Um, and then there's also an ironing, a yellow ironing top that you can put on. But I really like my wool mat, so that's what I use most. Perfect. And one last one, this one right here. Oh, I'm surprised that is so much smaller. The, uh, the, the purple for some reason. And that could have just been the stitching pulling in on that. And these are done. These are going to be all the border strips. And instead of having to do... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hoopings. We did it all in four hoopings, which I think is the way to go. And I will see you on Thursday with our border uh, strips already quilted and done. Bye.